Welcome back to the class on the Alderton Mission School. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about synchronous mission connected to the infinity bus. Whenever you are saying mission means that may be the generator or the moon. Synchronous generator connected to the infinity bus. Infinity bus is nothing but the point where we are maintaining frequency and voltage is constant. This is the infinity bus. This is generator which is giving the power to the infinity bus. Synchronous reactions where we neglected the armature resistance of shatter winding. This current is nothing but a I. If you draw the phasor diagram, we have taken the VT on the x axis. The current lacks the bus voltage by angle pi. So, for this one, we are adding the IA excess drop that is perpendicular to the IA. We are drawing the phasor from the tip of the VT. We are getting the JIA axis. The phasor sum of VT and this phasor gives the excitation voltage here. The angle between the terminal voltage and the excitation voltage is nothing but delta. delta. Here we constructed the right angle triangle by means of a dotted line. This angle is nothing but a 5. This angle is nothing but a 90 minus 5. The power given to the infinity bus that is equal to Vt into Ia into cos 5. Vt is nothing but a bus voltage, Ia is nothing but armature current, cos 5 is nothing but a power factor. Now we are going to find out the from the outer triangle OBC. We are finding the length BC, EF sin delta, we consider this triangle. Auto triangle, we are getting the EF sin delta. If we consider this triangle, we are getting the BC equal to IA excess cos pi. These two are equal. Now we are going to find out the IA cos pi that is equal to EF sin delta by excess. In equation 1, in place of IA cos pi, you are substituting this value, you are getting the power given to the infinity bus is the EF dt sin delta by. This is for the non silent four synchronous generator. Nothing but a cylindrical type synchronous. See here the delta we can vary from 0 to 180 degrees. We have taken the delta on the x axis 0, 90, and 180. This is the sign, this is the maximum value EF VT by XS. So we are getting this type of operation. This is generator operation. Suppose if the same machine is operating as in the air motor, then we are getting the same profile in the negative axis. This is the profile of the synchronous motor operation. In case of generator, all the phases are rotating in anti clockwise direction, so the VT leaves the v EF. Because in the case of generator, EF is generated in a shatter winding, VT is the terminal voltage. This is the cause, this is the effect. But in case of motor, the voltage which is applied to shatter winding is a cause, EF is an effect. So, EF leaves the VT in case of a motor. Now we are going to develop the same expression for the silent pole synchronous generator. Again, we have taken the silent point generator connected to the infinity bus. We have taken the VT here. This is the pi. VT lacks the pi. This IA we are resolving the two components. One is P component, another one is the Q component. The Q component is the matter which is in place with EF. Now, for VT, we are adding the JID XT from the tip of the VT that is perpendicular to the ID. Again, from the tip of this vector, we are adding the JIQQ up to the EF. This is the phasor diagram of the silent pole synchronous generator where we neglected the shatter resistance. Now in this case, the power download P equal to VT cos delta into IQ plus VT sin delta into IQ. Nothing but this is VT, the compound in phase with a IQ that is VT cos delta into IQ. VT sin delta is nothing but the compound which is in phase with a ID. That's why here we take Vt sin delta into I. This is the expression to find the power developed in the case of a silent pole synchronous change. So from this line, from this vector, we can say that the length EF equal to OA plus AC, where OA equal to Vt cos delta. Again, this length equal to ID xt that we have taken here. So from this expression, we, have, we found the value of ID equal to EF minus Vt cos delta by x. Again, this length equal to Vt sin delta that is equal to IQXQ. We got this equation. From this equation, we found the value of IQ. We are getting the Vt sin delta by x. Now, substitute this 2 and 3 equation in a equation 1. If you simplify that equation, finally, we are getting the power develop in a silent force synchronous generator EF Vt by xt sin delta plus Vt square by 2 into 1 by xq minus 1 by xt into sin 2 delta. Here, the total power is consisting of two components. One is the, the power which is almost all similar to the cylindrical type product. This component of the power is nothing but a reluctance power. 
because it is not depending upon the nothing but excitation voltage it is only depending upon the xp and x because of a silency of a rotor only the torque is developed in a motor reluctance power on the x axis we have taken the 0 90 and 180 the profile of this compound is nothing but a sign this is nothing but a component black line this component is nothing but a sign 2 delta nothing but it is completing the one cycle which is the 180 the phasor sum of this two is nothing but a this is the power developed in a silent force synchronous generator. Same manner we can develop for the synchronous motor also, but the graph we are getting on the lead to power x. Again, we have taken the same equation just now to discuss about this is the electromagnetic uh, power. This is the reluctance power. Now we can find out the electromagnetic torque that is equal to this component divided by the omega s. Torque also we can calculate if we divide this equation by the omega s. Synchronous power portion is nothing but a rate of change of synchronous power with respect to the delta is nothing but synchronous power force. Already we know the power developed with identical rotor as well as the silent force synchronous generator. So to differentiate with respect to the delta, we are getting the two expressions. One is in a cylindrical rotor, this is the expression EF VT by X cos delta. For silent force generator, this is represented in the EF VT by X P cos delta plus VT square P to 1 by X Q minus 1 by X P into cos 2 R. What exactly this quotient is representing means how much stator flux and rotor flux is coupled in a synchronous. If this quotient is very high, means stator flux and rotor flux is coupled very strongly. It is not going to affect even though we apply some mechanical load on the synchronous motor. It is not going to affect if you apply some amount of electrical load on the stator. If there is a change in the supply voltage, also it is not going to affect. If this quotient is very high. Moreover, in case of silent force generator, the synchronous power quotient is highly depending upon the XP and XQ also. It is also depending upon the excitation rate. Here we have shown that for the cylindrical rotor, delta we have taken the x-axis and the y-axis we have taken the power. If we differentiate this the profile of the graph with respect to the delta, we are getting the synchronous power quotient that is the cost. So we are getting this type of profile. If the synchronous power quotient is positive, then the, then the machine is stable. The synchronous power quotient is negative, I think what is the synchronous state. So, as long as the delta value less than the 90 degrees, the machine may be the generator or the motor, it will be a stable region. Otherwise, the machine is going to be an unstable state. That we are going to decide by means of synchronous power force. Synchronizing power. Suppose if you take the one generator which is connected with the power, due to the some disturbance, if there is a Change in a load angle from alpha to alpha plus delta del. Because of change in a load angle, there is some amount of power will be circulating between the machine and bus or bus to the machine. Suppose if the machine is generated, there is power will be passing from the machine to the bus. If the machine is a motor, then the power is passing from the bus to the machine because of a disturbance. That power is nothing but a synchronizing power. In case of cylindrical rotor, the synchronizing power is denoted by T that is equal to dt by d delta into delta del. So if you substitute these values here, already we know that this value EF Vt by Xs cos delta into del. At no low, the delta value becomes a zero, excitation voltage equal to terminal voltage, then the above equation will be simplified as a Vt into Vt by Xs into delta del. So Vt by Xs we can write it as a Short current, so Vt into Is into delta del. Nothing but a, from this expression we can say very easily that the synchronizing power will be existing only in a transient operation only. Suppose if there is some disturbance occurs in a synchronous motor, now the synchronizing power will be passing from the bus to the motor. Because of the power again, there is a synchronism between the stator flux and the rotor flux will be regained. Once it is regained, the delta del value becomes a C. Then the synchronizing power will become a So here what we can understand means the synchronizing power will be existing in the synchronous machine only during the transient operation whether it is a synchronous generator or the synchronous motor.